So good morning, everyone. Such a joy and pleasure with, to be with you today. Uh, this is a season of celebration, you know. And uh, today, as I was driving out the gate of my colony, I was thinking, you know, it's Christmas is a wonderful season to share about the gospel. But then it struck me that, you know, every Sunday is actually an opportunity to share the gospel as well. Because everybody's relaxing and resting on Sunday, you know, and nobody actually knows why, I mean, in the general population, why Sunday is the special day. And actually, you know why, right? Why do we celebrate Sunday as the off day, as a day of rest? Because of the day of resurrection, right? Because of Jesus rose on that day. And many people don't know that. So I encourage you, you know, uh, every day should be an opportunity to share something about Christ, or what he has done for you. And uh, so grab every opportunity. And yes, this is a season of potluck as well. So how many have you been potlucking? Potting or whatever, sorry. <laughs> I mean, yeah, <laughs> enjoying all the goodies. Yes, so in that sense, even my sermon in that way would be a potluck because there's so many treasures in it. And I would like to, uh, you know, uh, ask you to dip in and take what you get out of it for each one there's something special and of course we're going through the series of uh, uh life of david first samuel chapter 25 is uh, my portion for today and <coughs> let me start with a word of prayer holy father we praise you and we thank you god for your son jesus christ and for all your saints like king david oh god whose lives and stories and testimonies give us encouragement and comfort also god for you have dealt with them in such a loving gracious manner and you are the same God, yesterday, today, and forever. And you deal with us in such a gracious manner, O oh God. And so even as I bring your word, I give myself to you. We give our ears to you, our hearts, our minds. Open our spiritual hearts, O oh Father, to receive your word this day, O oh God. Bless our congregation. Bless your children here this day, O oh God. Those who are here physically and those who are at home, even listening online, O oh God. Visit them, O oh God, Father, in their place of worship, O oh Father. Thank you so much. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Those who know this, <clears throat> some people have got PowerPoints, but I have got <laughs> powerful points. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, First Samuel, chapter 25. I think we have a slide for that. If you have a Bible, let's just go through the story. Okay? Let's go through the story and see what we can glean out of it. Okay? Today being the last day, I don't want I, I, I don't want to be too heavy, but I want it as a reflection of the past year and a preparation for the future, right? So let's just go to the story. Our little children, every few, once in a while, they say, Daddy, tell me a story. So this is for you children, young people out there. Story of King David, okay? Verse 20, chapter, uh, chapter 25, verse 1. Now Samuel died. Oh, it starts with a debt. But whenever there's a debt, there's something new that's going to happen. This very appropriate. This is the last day of the year. Something is ending this year, this day. But something new is beginning. Praise the Lord. Mm. And all Israel assembled and mourned for him, and they buried him at his home in Ramah. Then David moved into the desert of Paran. A certain man in Maon, who had property there at Carmel, was very wealthy. He had a thousand goats and three thousand sheep, which he was shearing in Carmel. You know, a modern uh, estimate is for five to ten sheep, you need about an acre of land. So if he's got 4,000 sheep and goats, imagine how many acres of land this guy has got, you know? It's a very wealthy man. So we can we start the story by looking at this really prosperous, blessed man. And I would ask you, are you that blessed person whom God has blessed this year? So much wealth, opportunity, you know, love, so much. And this is a time of celebration. And he, what is he doing over here? He is sharing his sheep. So it's not only, it's a time of gathering of all his wealth, of calculating the wealth and distributing, distribution of wealth. And she had, and he had a wife whose name was Abigail. She was an intelligent and beautiful woman, but her husband was surely and, and mean in his dealings. He was a Calebite. Now, who is a Calebite? Remember uh, Caleb, Joshua and Caleb? Yes, so he is a descendant of Caleb, right? Not only is he a, of the tribe of Judah, which is the same tribe as King David, but is also descendant of Caleb. A lot of blessing upon this man. Generations of blessing has come upon him. Because not only, because of so many reasons. Are you that man? Do you have blessings in your bloodline? Do you have blessings from your fathers? Do you have blessings from your community? Let's see what he does with it. <clears throat> While David was in the wilderness, he heard that Nabal was sharing sheep. So he sent 
ten young men and said to them, Go to Nambal at Carmel and greet him in my name. Say to him, Long life to you, good health to you and your household, and good health to all that is yours. He was expecting his kinsmen, because he was also a Judaite, uh, yeah, from the same tribe. He celebrated, like any of us in any culture, when we go to our tribesmen or kinsmen or relatives, we especially during a time of celebration, a wedding or a feast, we expect some, some gift, some sharing of the joy. So he was, he was natural in this, so he went ahead. But not, on, not only that, <clears throat> let's see what extra benefits or what extra service that King David has done. Now I hear that in sheep sharing time, <clears throat> When his shepherds were with us, we did not mistreat them. And the whole time they were at Carmel, nothing of theirs was missing. What did King David do? What did David do this time? He watched over the flock of his neighbor. He took care of them. He made sure that not only did he not harass them, but made sure nobody else harassed them. A great favor, out of joy, out of his natural inclination as a shepherd. You see something over here. This is just what he did. That was in his nature. And he went around taking care of all those around him. Ask, <clears throat> verse 8, ask your own servants and they will tell you. Therefore, be favorable, favorable <clears throat> towards my men. Since we come at a festive time, please give your servants and your son David whatever you can find for them. <clears throat> when David's men arrived, they gave Nabal this message in, da in David's name. Then they waited. Nabal answered David's servants, Who is this David? Who is the son of Jesse? Many servants are breaking away from their masters these days. Why should I take my bread and water and the meat I have slaughtered for my shearers and give it to men coming from who knows where? <clears throat> Nambal not only rejects David, he insults David on his face. Right? And he calls him a rebellious servant. He calls David a rebellious servant of all the things. And in many cultures, runaway slaves would have been executed, among, all, among other things. He not only re refuses to recognize who David is, but he rejects whatever he has done. I would say to you, some of us may have had that experience this past year. Right? You have gone to your kinsmen, your relatives, your friends. Maybe you have done great favors. Maybe something is owed to you, but you have been rejected. You have been denied. You have been canceled out. David knows what it feels like. Jesus was in the same place. He did so much for us, but he was rejected and denied and cast out. If you think nobody understands you, especially working with young people all these years, I know many of you are young here, many of you are old also. You have faced rejection and dejection and denial of your services rendered, of your love given, but there's somebody who understands you, somebody who has the, the knowledge, the solution to your problems. His name is Jesus. Don't think you're alone. As a counselor, many times I say, many people come to me and say, think that they are experiencing the problem for the first time in their life. Nobody will understand them. But let me tell you, Jesus understands. For all struggles that you've gone through, he's gone through worse. He knows everything you're going through. He understands you because he's been there. You talk about rejection and denial and abandonment and loss. He has been through that. You think you have lost years of your life but the word of God says, I'll restore to you the years the locusts have consumed. Right? Remember this. So even as you look back on this year, if you feel that you've been de denied and rejected and not given you due, God knows those who are his. God knows what you're going through. He understands. And yes, <clears throat> we can see that Nabal had great wealth, great prosperity, and he had every right and duty to uh, provide for King David and his men. But he refused. And this is also another thing, a slight, slight lesson for some of us is, you know, look to God to provide for you. This is one thing I would pick up against David, is he went to Nabal expecting rewards from Nabal. Remember, he was serving the Lord. You are serving the Lord. He is the rewarder of good things. All good things you do, you do in the name of the Lord. Don't expect anything from anybody, if, if I may put it that way, as harshly as that. And if they don't give you your due, it's all right, because God remembers he is keeping an account. He remembers. So one mistake, I would say, that King David probably made here, is he went to a man who was known to be a fool, who was known to be stingy, took care of him, and then what do you expect? This is how he reacts and behaves. And this is how he reacted and behaved. Right? So also remember, in the future, in the coming year, 
fight your battles wisely. Choose your battles wisely. Make wise connections and network with people as much as possible. Pray fully into every relationship you go to. Pray about it. <clears throat> Verse 12. David's men turned around and went back. And when they arrived, they reported every word David said to his men. Each of you, strap on your sword. So they did. And David strapped on his as well. About 400 men went up with David, with 200 staying with the supply. Here we see a very natural reaction. David is filled with rage, shame also, humiliation also. And then he acts swiftly and brutally, without thinking, without consolidating, without, he just impulsively acts. Many times we are like that as well. Especially in Delhi traffic, yes. Somebody smashed my car a few days ago. I was parked at home. I was sitting at home and someone came and smashed it from the back. Praise God, you know, he gave me the calm to control myself and everything worked out in short. But there's especially in every way we go to, in our workplaces, we were talking about our friend, yes? And all of us, we have so many opportunities to lose our cool, to lose our temper, to be impulsive and reactive. And so we see here, don't worry, we're not judging you, but we're all like that. This is a re re reflection, you know, that all human beings are like this. Yes, so let's see what, uh, how God helps us in these circumstances. <clears throat> okay, what we read here is he is not ready to show mercy. By the way, in the previous chapter, if you remember, and in the com coming chapter also, King David or David Saul spares Saul's life, right? He had every opportunity to kill him. When he entered the cave, he could have killed him, but he did not. And later we see also how he spares Saul's life. So sometimes we can see that um, <clears throat> maybe David was being gracious to a man who was his superior. But he was not gracious to somebody you saw as less superior than him, as in the equal as him. You understand this? Sometimes we are like that as well. We are grateful, gracious, you know, somebody like our father or our uncle or our, you know, boss or principal hurts us and abuses us and torments us. We are gracious, you know, we bear ourselves, we control ourselves. But if it's a you know chokira or guard or rickshawala or our juniors, we let them out. We let it out. Have you been in that place? It happens to us. It happens. And we see that this is what seems to be happening to King David. He's letting it out. He's filled with, filled with frustration, you can imagine. So many years being hounded, you know, being rejected. And that frustration, this is the kind of the tipping point. It comes out during this time. And so he prepares himself and is going to, you know, bring justice to himself. Because he has not experienced justice in this past few years. You can see a sense of that as a human being. He just lets it out. And so he's, he's on his way. All ready with 400 men to slaughter Nabal and his men. Verse 14. One of the servants told Abigail. Thank God for that one servant. That one servant. Told Nabal's wife. David sent messengers from the wilderness to give our masters his greetings. But he hurled insults at them. Yet these, men, yet these men were good to us. They did not mistreat us. And the whole time we were out in the field. Near them nothing was missing. Night and day there were a wall around us the whole time. We were herding our sheep near them. Now think it over and see what you can do because disaster is hanging over our master and his whole household. He is such a wicked man that no one can talk to him. Praise God that people are watching you. They know your story, your testimony. You do good no matter what it is. God is taking it into account and people are watching. You do good no matter what. Don't look for the results but still thank God that God is keeping a tab and he's got people everywhere and these people his angels, let me say, will find a solution when you are not able to. Okay? Let's continue. Let's see what it looks like. Abigail acts quickly. <clears throat> she took 200 loaves of bread, two skins of wine, five dressed sheep, five seeds of roasted grain, 100 cakes of raisin, 200 cake, cakes of pressed figs, and loaded them on donkeys. Then she told her servant, go ahead of me. I'll follow you. But she did not tell her husband Nabal. What we see here is also is how rich this man was for uh, Abigail to suddenly be able to gather so much supplies. You see, he was a very rich man. It's like a couple of uh, truckloads, in fact. So much goods were suddenly prepared. Okay. As she came riding <clears throat> her donkey into a mountain ravine, there was David and his men descending towards her, and she met them. David uh, had just said, it's been useless. All my watching over this fellow's property in the wilderness, so nothing of his was missing. He has paid me back evil for good. True. May God deal with David. Be it even so severely. If by morning I leave alive one male of all who belong to him. 
my goodness, he was so angry, filled with revenge, filled with anger and hurt. And this is, he's, he's speaking it as he's going along the way. But I encourage you, be careful of your anger. Be careful of your self-importance. Be careful. Don't think too much of yourself. Humble. Pull back. And, but the word of God says, when we're not able to, God is going to give us a way out. Let's see how that goes. But in, let me remind you from Ephesians 4.26. He says, God says, be angry, yet do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger. This is Ephesians 4.26. Psalms 404 says, be angry, yet do not sin. On your bed, search your hearts and be still. Here's an encouragement on how to deal with anger. Anger in itself is just an emotion. There's nothing wrong with being angry. Okay, it's all right. It's a reactionary emotion. That's fine. But in your anger, do not sin. Do not sin. It is an opportunity lying in wait for you to destroy yourself and destroy others around you. Look at this. It says, do not let the sun go down in your anger. Take your time. It says here, in your bed, search your heart and be still, be still, be still. Don't send that email off immediately, right? Don't report, don't retort, don't text back, especially in this day and age. Everything is so fast. Take your time, cool down, pray about it, think about it, consult someone. Go to your friend or your teacher or mentor, talk to them. God has given us the church. Yes, so many elders and wiser people ahead of us. Talk to them. They will give you a solution. Am I right, brother? God will speak to you. He will, but you have to rest and be quiet. Okay? <clears throat> when Abigail saw David, she, she quickly got off her donkey and bowed, bowed down with David with her face to the ground. She fell at his feet and said, Pardon your servant, my Lord. Let me speak to you. Hear what your servant has to say. Pay no attention, my Lord, to that wicked man, Nabal. He is just like his name. His name means fool. And folly goes with him. As for me, your servant, I did not see the men my Lord sent. And now, my Lord, as surely as the Lord your God lives, and as you live, since the Lord has kept you from bloodshed and from avenging yourself from your own hands, may your enemies and all who intend on harming my Lord be like Nabal. And let this gift which your servant has brought to you, my Lord, be given to the men who, who follow you. Praise God. Thank God for his intercessors. Am I right? Many times I know you would have experienced these critical moments, but, get, but then if you've been walking with the Lord, if you've been faithful, God sends angels along your way. God gives you that sudden phone call maybe, or as the doorbell rings, or a solution comes, a dream comes, and he dissipates your anger and he gives you a solution to your problems. How much... How much more it will be if you are intimate with the Lord? Daily praying, daily studying the word of God. In fellowship, some of you, I know, are not being mentored. Maybe you're not in home groups. Maybe you're not meeting a Christian brother or sister regularly. It helps. I encourage you. Be plugged in to the life of the church. Attending Sunday is like, you know, is like, uh, like pudding. But in, for the rest of the week, you need your meat, your soup, your, your rice, you know. That is a Christian fellowship that we need. So I encourage you, my brothers and sisters, if you wanted intimate moments with God, where he answers you literally, those are the moments when you build your connection with the Lord to hear his voice. Okay. Praise God. So what we see here is Abigail interceding and bringing peace between them. Verse 28. Please forgive your servant's presumption. The Lord your God will certainly make a lasting dynasty for my Lord. She prophesies, because you fight the Lord's battles, and no wrongdoing will be found in you as long as you live. Even though someone is pursuing you to take your life, the life of my Lord will be bound surely in the bundle of the living by the Lord your God. But the lives of your enemies, he will hurl away as from the pocket of a sling. Let this be your promise as well. Claim this promise this day. Understand this. Let this be your promise. And I proclaim this promise for each one of you. That this is the blessing for you as well. You're no longer hopeless and lost and confused and rejected. You will live. You will live abundantly. My brothers, my sisters, claim that promise. When the Lord has fulfilled for my Lord every good thing he promised concerning him and has appointed him ruler over Israel, my Lord will not have his conscience the staggering burden of needless bloodshed or of having avenged himself. And when the Lord, your God, has brought my Lord success, remember your servant. 
Praise to God. Praise God. What does it say? God sent Abigail so that David did not have to shed blood. He did not have to bring his own vengeance upon himself. God gave him a way out. God will give you a way out so that you don't have to play tricks and games to find solutions to your problems. You understand this? You don't have to cheat in the exams. You don't have to bribe anybody. You don't have to play games on gossip or backbite. You don't have to do any of those games. Trust and wait on the Lord. And he will deliver you. David said to Abigail, praise be to the Lord. Now your response is this. Blessings has been proclaimed on you, to you. Promises have been given. Salvation has come. What is your response? Because many times, many times, help is given, but we don't take it. We don't acknowledge it. We don't. I encourage you today, this day, take it. He says, praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, who has sent you today to meet me. May your blessing be for your good judgment and for keeping me from bloodshed this day and from avenging myself with my own hands. Otherwise, as surely as the Lord lives, the God of Israel lives, who, who has kept me from harming you. If I had not come quickly to, if you had not come quickly to meet me, not one male belonging to Nabal would have been left alive by daybreak. He acknowledges this fact. Many times we, we experience God's blessing, but we don't reflect on it. We don't dwell on it. We don't acknowledge it. Do you understand? Have you been in such a place? Blessings come from God. But you say, oh, it's my uncle. It's, oh, it's coincidence. You know, it just happened by luck. You know, touch wood, whatever. No, it's not. Every good thing is from God, our Father, from above. Acknowledge the giver of good things. Praise God, okay? Acknowledge that. Reflect on it. Meditate on it. Because one day, it will be your testimony. It has to be a testimony. You have to share of what God has done in your life so that people are encouraged. God is glorified. People are saved. Meditate on it because your story may save someone else. Amen. <clears throat> then David accepted from her hand and she, what she had brought and said, go, go home in peace. I've heard your words and granted your requests. So this, David decides to accept the offering of peace and surrenders his thirst for revenge. You also have a choice. He had a choice and he took it. He surrendered it. He said, no, I will not shed any more blood. Yes, God has given me justice. God is going to give you justice. God has given you justice. He is your avenger. My brothers, my sisters, don't take it upon yourself. What do you see in verse 36? <clears throat> when Abigail went to Nabal, he was in his house, holding a banquet like that of a king. He was in high spirits and very drunk. So she told him nothing at all until they break. Then in the morning, when Nabal was sober, his wife told him all these things and his heart failed him and he became like a stone. About 10 days later, the Lord struck Nabal and he died. What a tragic end to a sad man, a man who had everything, but then again had nothing. Don't let this be your story. Don't let this be your story. We have heard of so many stories like this. <clears throat> when David heard that Nabal was dead, he said, praise be to the Lord who has upheld my cause against Nabal for treating me with contempt. He has kept his servant from doing wrong and has brought Nabal's wrongdoing on his own head. David acknowledges that it was the Lord who avenged him, vindicated him and protected him from committing sin. Are you reflecting on the blessings of God, on the deliverance of God? Reflect on it. Praise be to God. I give you a moment. Think about it. This past year, how many times has God delivered you from known and unknown dangers? from known and unknown failures, an opportunity to sin, an opportunity to lose your cool. Praise be to God. This has been a blessed year for all of you. I am sure of it. I am sure of it. Mm. Praise be to God. We have the same God and Father as King David. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And through Jesus, He is not only our Lord and God, but He is our Heavenly Father. And the Holy Spirit, His Holy Spirit walks with us, within us, every day of our lives. He will lead you and guide you this coming season. Then David sent word to Abigail and asked her to become his wife. His servant went to Carmel and said to Abigail, David has sent us to take you to become his wife. <clears throat> she bowed down with her face to the ground and said, I am a servant and I'm ready to serve you and wash the feet of my Lord's servant. Abigail quickly got on a donkey and attended by her five female servants, 
went into David's went with David's messengers and became his wife. <clears throat> I want to encourage you <clears throat> this year. Three things. Like King David, okay, he knew subconsciously in any in some way he knew his calling in life. This is the year for you, okay. So even if David was being hounded around, what we see here in his life is he was naturally doing the work of a shepherd. Yes? As we see amongst us in our congregation, his job was not being a shepherd. Remember this. His occupation, his, call, his, uh, his career was not as a shepherd, so to speak. But he had a shepherd's heart. And what was he doing? He was taking care of people. He had a flock of 600 men and families un under him. Let me say this. All right? Then he had, he was taking also care of Nabal sheep and all the people and villages that he kept traveling around to his whole journey. What was he doing? He was herding them. He was leading them. He was guiding them, protecting, providing for them. In a similar sense, I would encourage you, my brothers, my sisters, know your calling in life. Where do you fit into the body of Christ? Where do you fit? How do you comfort, nurture, take care of the flock of God? I mean, I, let me take some names, right? Brother Philip here. He's a professional in his own workplace with Samsung, right? But every few Sundays, he comes here and leads worship. He comes out of his place of joy, leading people. He's not being given a salary, no reward, no, no goat or sheep is getting, right? Out of his joy is coming. Right? Joy, pastor's joy also. <laughs> we see our ushering team, right? We see a music team. We see, uh, uh, you know, so many people in this congregation, I'm, I know, in the home groups, people have opened their houses up. Some of them are counselors, some of them are teachers, some of us, let me do this. Some of us are caregivers, some of us love to cook, right? Some of us love to nurture children. We opened a creche, a Sunday school. There well, so many amongst us who in our own little way, and later, yes, in our big ways also, we serve the church, right? And our greater outer community. Like, let me take uh, Dr. Nara, for example. Uh, many of you, <clears throat> it's okay. <clears throat> many of you know that her team is working with in the GB Road with the prostitutes and so on and so forth. You know, they're happily, joyfully going year after year after year in spite of so many pressures and troubles they have. That is their calling, to serve and save the lost and to comfort the people. And thus, in that same way, there's so many ministries I know many of you are involved in. I encourage you, ask the Lord, what is your calling in life? And like King David, no matter what circumstance and situation you may be, what other you know, job you may be doing, you will flow in that call of your life. I mean, understand this, please. And how will you find this is when you spend time with the Lord and in, his, in the company of his saints, the opportunity will be given to you. <clears throat> you will be provided. Joy will pour out of you. And yes, the third lesson I want to uh, conclude for today is, let me, let me connect it to the Lord's Prayer. <clears throat> we all know the Lord's Prayer? Yes? <clears throat> Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, comma, and forgive us our sins, comma, as we forgive those who sin against us. And do not bring us to the test, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. What does this mean? Some of us are looking for supply, yes? We all look for supply. We are looking for a job, that voice, that opportunity, whatever it is, we need our daily bread from the Lord. But some of us, Sometimes we experience blockages in not receiving the supply. If you look at us logically over here. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins. What does it mean? Unforgiveness prevents. There is a blockage because there is bitterness or anger or rage like King David in his heart. These things will prevent you from receiving the fullness of God's blessing in your life as well. So I say to you, repent of your sins. Today go home. Call somebody you have not repented to. If you have wronged someone, if you have take, taken a loan and not returned it, if you have said something, if you have humiliated someone, if you have not kept a promise, if you have bitterness in your heart, somebody may have stolen your land. Somebody may have betrayed you. Someone may have robbed from you. It's all right. Forgive them as the Lord forgives you. As the Lord forgives you. Forgive. Forgive. And forgive us our debts, right? If we forgive people, the unforgiveness itself is a sin. 
right? Unforgiveness itself is a sin. So when you forgive, what happens? Forgiveness will also be released into our lives. And all the bread that we need, the wine that we need, the oil that we need, the supply that we need from heaven will be provided for us. And so even as we look to the new year, <clears throat> go home today and promise to enter the new year without any muck from the previous year. No anger, no bitterness, no remorse, no regrets. Lay it all at the feet of the cross. Lay it all at the feet of the cross. He will deliver you. And, I, <clears throat> and let me end with Matthew 6, 25 to 33. As you look into the new year. Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life. This is the word of God. Do not be anxious about your life. Some of you are looking for marriage, for relationship, for retirement. Yes, for deliverance, for healing, for some blessing. Do not be anxious about your life. What you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more important than food <clears throat> and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns. Yet the heavenly father feeds them. Go, go take a break. Go to the mountains. Go and look at the birds and learn a lesson from them. Go learn from the ant. God provides for them. <clears throat> look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns. And yet the heavenly father feeds them. Are you not more valued than they? And which of you by, by being anxious can add a single hour to his life? And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of them. Praise be to God. Hmm. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you? O oh, you of little faith. Therefore, do not be anxious. Therefore, do not be anxious. Saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we wear? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we do? Or where shall we study? Or where shall we live? Or who will help us? And who will deliver us? Who will give us vengeance? Who will restore us? Who will pay for our bills? For all the loans that we've taken? From all the sickness that we have? For the Gentiles run after all these things. Those who do not know the Lord Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior. They run after these things, yes. But, and your heavenly father <clears throat> knows that you need them all. Your heavenly father, please, he's your father. Your heavenly father, heavenly, he's up there. And he's in all power and authority and wisdom and knowledge. And he's watching over you. Place God in his tr right throne. Do not belittle God. Put him in his right place and you will be in your right place. But seek here first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Amen. Amen. Seek here first the kingdom of heaven and all these things shall be added unto you. What is that? Forgive. Confess. Repent. Be generous. Be kind. Seek the Lord. Serve. And surrender all your anger and bitterness into the hands of God. And he will deliver you. And he'll fill your mouth with laughter. And your belly with good things. And you'll bless your descendants. And you will make your name great in the nations. Praise be to God. Father Lord, we thank you so much, O God. For your son, Jesus Christ, through whom we have the victory over sin and death. Over hopelessness, over loss. Oh, Father, this day, this 31st of January, 2023. We first of all thank you, O God, that you've been walking with us this whole season. Yes, we have experienced sorrows and sufferings and difficulties. Yes, we have. But you have walked right with us and you have delivered us, each one of us, from all our troubles, O oh God. Oh, Lord. And so we pray that we will not enter the new year with bitterness and anger and regrets and remorse behind us, O oh God. We lay down at the feet of the cross right now, O oh God. And as we walk into the new year, we pray that you will supply us our need. Lead us. Go ahead of us, O oh Lord. Show us where we should go. Be the light. Shine the light in our paths, oh Father. And as the word of God says, speak to us in our ears. Turn this way and turn that way. We want that intimacy with you, God. Oh, Father, bless your children. Bless your children. Bless the elders here. Bless the mothers and the fathers. The husbands and the wives. The singles, the students, the school students, university children. Oh, Lord, we are yours. Father, we thank you that you have no grandchildren. You just have children. In each one of us are your children. And we are children of hope, children of promise, children of power. 
And so we dedicate this coming year, 2024. May it be a year of jubilee for all of us. A year of restoration, a year of healing, a year of promotion, a year of blessing. Yes, struggles will come, but we will be victorious by the power of the risen Savior. Amen. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Let us give a shout of praise to God. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you. God bless you, everyone. And let us, in celebration, let's partake of the Lord's Supper. <clears throat> Yes. If you want elements to come to you, raise your hand. If you haven't received, yes. A few over here. <coughs> Up there also. So take us, rest of us, let's take a moment. <coughs> if there's any immediate sin that we can comprehend of, that we can think of, let's confess it before the Lord. And let us give thanks. Let us give thanks. Because even not thanking God itself is not good. Let's give thanks. And Father Lord, we thank you again for the blood of your son, Jesus Christ. The body that was broken at the cross. The blood that was shed. Because through this veil, we can enter your sweet presence, God. And have that intimacy with you. We thank you, Father. And even as one, as a church, we declare, we proclaim that we are a family under your fatherhood. And we are one in you. So we thank you and you receive this gift with thanks. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let us take of it together. <clears throat>